Hello and welcome to Lunchbots by BirdBrain Technologies. Lunchbots is a web series dedicated to teachers who are using robotics in their classrooms and to teachers who are planning to use robotics in their classrooms. My name is Matt, I'm the technology coach for BirdBrain Technologies, and I'm here to share some practical tips and tools that will help you bring robotics to your students. We are gonna begin this episode the way we begin all episodes, and that's with a brief video. This video will function as a conversation starter Today's conversation is all about using the hummingbird to move your students from scratch to Arduino. This is the Hummingbird Duo. It's called the Hummingbird Duo because it's built on top of an Arduino Duo. If I were to turn the hummingbird over, you'll actually see the Arduino. It's right there. Arduinos are called microcontrollers. They're kind of like mini computers. Arduinos can be you know, a little tricky. They're not impossible. First time robot builders are making cool new stuff with Arduinos every day. But if I had a class of 30 students who had never programmed or built a robot before, well, purchasing the right motor, soldering, breadboarding, understanding which resistor to use and why, making sure you have the right power source, programming in a text-based language, the stuff is tricky. The ability to solder and breadboard are essential to anyone planning on becoming an engineer, but these activities don't always make for the best first touch with robotics. This is why the Hummingbird Duo exists. Through some clever circuitry and power management, Hummingbird eliminates the need for breadboarding and soldering. And Hummingbird can be programmed in popular, easy-to-learn block-based languages like Snap or Scratch. The benefit of Hummingbird is that students don't have to focus on Ohm's Law or on complicated syntax. The Hummingbird opens up a huge design space for students to express their creativity and demonstrate their knowledge of any subject through robotics. But what if your students have been using Hummingbird with block-based languages for some time and they're ready for the next step? Hummingbird can be programmed in a whole range of languages, including Python, Java, and Arduino, which means it can grow with your students. To make the transition to text-based languages easier, the folks at Arduino created a plugin called ArduBlock. ArduBlock allows students to code in a block-based environment. This block-based code is then translated into the Arduino text language. This allows students to begin making the link between what they're seeing in ArduBlock and the text. When using the Hummingbird, there is a benefit to coding in Arduino. Scratch and other block-based languages require the computer and the robot to be tethered, either by USB cable or by a Bluetooth connection. Since the Hummingbird Duo is built on top of an Arduino, you can upload your Arduino code into the Hummingbird's memory, unplug the USB, and it runs without assistance from any other device. Now that you know you can make untethered robots using the Arduino programming language, what can you make? Here's an idea I proposed during the last episode. A miniature parade. This idea was developed by Andrew Milne and myself while at the Tech Hive Teen Internship Program at the Lawrence Hall of Science. Here comes the first float now. This float is a simple line-following robot, but because the Hummingbird is such a versatile design tool, it's very easy to add on servos, LEDs, and other sensors. This float is from a parade that is designed to show school spirit or advertise your school's upcoming events. When I'm designing a new class project, I like there to be some sort of simple skill building project that I could lead the class through. The skill builder will teach the basic skills and provide everyone in the class with the same base knowledge and jumping off point. In the case of the miniature parade, the chassis is the skill builder. The assembly is simple, the programming is straightforward, and success can be achieved by someone who has never used the tool before. Students then spend the majority of the time designing the float, and it can take any crazy form that the students want. They'll often start defining their own challenges and come up with their own solutions. Dropping these student-designed floats into a tiny city makes for a really fun showcase. And coming around the bend, we have another float. This one was inspired by the book To Kill a Mockingbird. The miniature parade could be a fun twist on the book report or the classic shoebox diorama. The 
This last float is my favorite. It features these little cup bots. Cup bots can be built very quickly by younger students. And what you're seeing here is an example of a project that is a collaboration between the older students and younger students. The younger students get to design the characters on the float, while the older students build the chassis and program the movement. It is a very good opportunity to get the younger students excited about robotics, while at the same time allowing the older students to feel like experts. I'll provide a link to the Getting Started with Arduino page in the description section of this video. For those of you watching live, hang tight. We're going to begin our conversation just after this video. For those of you watching this as an archived video, we can continue the conversation on Twitter, that's at birdbraintech, hashtag lunchbots, or in the comment section of this video. I'll see you in two weeks when we're going to be talking about the Finch Loan Program. I'll see you next time.